It gives me great pleasure to be amid, amid you of so many professional and colleagues ministers. I'm thankful to the organizers, particularly Mr. Sanjay Kumar, CEO of Geospatial Media and Communications, and Mr. Niraj, Director of Middle East, Africa, and Africa, for giving me the opportunity to form part of this distinguished panel. My intervention will focus on how I see the role of geospatial policies in the development of my country. I will lay particular emphasis on the achievements in the field of land information management and legislative reform. Article 1 of the Protocol to the European Convention on Human Rights on Protection of Property reads as follows. Every natural or legal person is entitled to the peaceful enjoyment of his possessions. No one shall be deprived of his possession except in the public interest and subject to the conditions provided by, for, for by law and by the general principles of international law." Unquote. The protocol thus establishes right of property, but also highlights the responsibility of the state and lays down the parameters of the state duties and obligations. These principles are also enshrined in the constitution of Mauritius. Land is central to many expectations. Today, access to up-to-date information and its use by the public the business community and state agencies in decision making and for fostering economic and social development are becoming critical in information driven economies. The government of Mauritius is fully conscious of the need to have cutting edge technology to manage its limited but very precious resource. It all starts with a proper recording system of property. Mauritius has a relatively long history of property records dating back to the French colonial period in the 18th century when land concessions were attributed to French settlers mainly for cultivation of sugarcane. Since then and up to recently, recording of land transactions were dealt under the civil code. Subsequently, very important pieces of legislation related to land issues have been enacted including the State Land Acts and Pas Geometric. The two key state agencies which are responsible for land administration in Mauritius are respectively the Ministry of Finance with its Registrar General uh, Department responsible to register all land transactions and the Valuation Real Estate Consultancy Services responsible for assessing property values for acquisition or taxation purposes. And, of course, my ministry, the Minister of Housing and Land, responsible for the survey, management of state land, and providing the planning and development framework for the island. The land transaction system had numerous weaknesses, which prevented the sector to cope with issues such as fraudulent practices, security of registration, and confidence. Furthermore, the system did not foster professional responsibilities. This called for a reform process. The thought process on land reform started in the late 90s and actual reform of the land management system was rolled in in 2005 when this present government uh, got elected and it articulated the land management forum as follows in, in our government program. By 2010, there will be a modern, integrated, secure, transparent, affordable, and efficient land administration and management system that underpins economic growth, social stability, and sustainable resource development in Mauritius. Over the years, it has been observed that geospatial technologies are essential to create an integrated land management system. Indeed, Geospatial technologies help to provide the precise information on the nature, extent, spatial distribution of land resources, which enable planning, monitoring, and management for sustainable development. Moreover, geospatial information systems are vital for visualizing and interpreting the interaction of spatially distributed resources. GIS offers a more flexible and powerful tool than conventional data processing system as it provides a mean of taking large volume of different kinds of data sets 
and combining them into new data sets. Geospatial technology enables streamlining of workflows and enforces cadastral procedures in the correct and legal way, thereby enabling an efficient and effective land administration. Hence, the assistance of Department of Land Administration, DOLA, now Landgate of the State of Western Australia, was sought to provide expertise on how to develop a modern administration system for our specific needs. A land administration, valuation and information management system called LAVIMS project was scoped and awarded to an international consortium, namely InfoTerra Limited. The project required the determination of spatial coordinates, land registration and valuation characteristics of all land parcels, both public and private, and establishing a digital cadaster which, when each land parcel is mapped and I assign a unique parcel and identification number. Have a complete property valuation role, a parcel-based deed registration system, and an integrated information management system supporting all these three components. The implementation of the LAVIMS project necessitated a series of action as follows. The establishment of a modern geodetic framework from Russia's in line with government policy to provide accessible control points to the community of surveyors and GIS users. My ministry has embarked on a geodetic network densi densification program. The scanning and digitalizing paper-based title deeds and the enactment of the Cadastral Survey Act in 2011 to set the legal framework for regulation of land survey practices. The cadastral deed components of the LAVIM project are fully operational. LAVIMS allows land transaction and recording to be effected according to established norms and procedures. The system provides an improved protection of property rights, eliminates any parallel system of informal land market transaction and registration. Provides opportunity of an establishment of a fair, equitable, and efficient land valuation and taxation system. Free gives access to the digital cadaster to some government agencies as well as the public who can search and make queries to the digital cadaster at the Registrar General Department. The policy of the government is to open up the system to other government agencies, such as the local municipalities, by allowing view and search access only. And trusting the geospatial data of LAVIMS project to three main stakeholders, namely the Registrar General Department, the Valuation Department of the Ministry of Finance, and the Survey Division of my ministry, which is a primary custodian of the system. We still have a long journey to complete our vision of a holistic reform. An integrated land information and management system will provide enhanced, fast, and transparent means to achieve strategic sustainable planning of development and protection of resources, address disaster risk planning, and improve basis for decision making. My ministry is responsible firstly for the management of state lands, which is around 20% of the ter territory, but of strategic importance. And secondly, for the elaboration of a national and local planning framework for controlling and guiding development to achieve a high standard of living without compromising sus environmental sustainability, food security, and equally addressing the poor and and destitute in terms of shelter. That is crucial to the government policy because we are for the people, especially for the poor and underprivileged. As such, it has an important role to play in the development of appropriate instruments to manage our land resources. We are the official focal point and custodian of cartographic services and have to meet all public shareholders' needs. Our priorities is to set the stage for our future plan of action by putting forward our blueprint for the establishment of a national spatial data infrastructure, NSDI. 
which is an important and strategic component of the hierarchy of geospatial instruments. Using the LAVIMS data as a base, together with updated satellite imagery, this integrated geospatial infrastructure will provide consistent means to collect, manage, and share geospatial data among several users. I had recently the opportunity of visiting Langate in Western Australia, and I was particularly impressed with the perspective which the program put in place can offer to society. Today, there is no way out than to adopt the state of our technologies, that is, they owe geospatial technologies in our objectives to manage and effect, land effectively and efficiently, while maintaining the focus of responding to all stakeholders' demands. We are therefore engaging in a series of actions to have the required output data sets which would form the primary source of information for constituting the national spatial data infrastructure. We, are, we realize that there are loads of data information available across the island which are held by different agencies. These data are either non-digital form, in non-digital form, or in other formats which are difficult and time consuming to access and use. Our aim is to manage and use information for the benefits of government, the industry, and the community. We propose to invest in both technology and human resources to enhance our technical capacity in GIS, real-time positioning technologies, and other technical and location-based areas of study to have enough professionals to man the system. All available options, including the use of cloud technology, are being considered. Necessary legislation will have to be put to facilitate the process to secure our sources of information and data of primary custodians. Empirical studies in certain critical areas will have to be undertaken where data, or data sets are non-existent, inadequate, or inappropriate. Mr. Chairman, I'm confident that where there is determination and firm commitment, achievements is guaranteed. We, have a, we however, have numerous milestones to cross in our endeavor, and we feel that with the collaboration of your organizations and all the stakeholders involved here, like yours, we will be able to respond possibly, positively to the needs and challenges of one and all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, sir.